When you make the decision as a Catholic to become devout in faith, your entire life is going to change. You are now seen as public enemy number one. You are part of a 2,000 year old tradition and simply stating that you are a part of that tradition makes you a target. Earlier this year, The Atlantic came out and said that this prayer tool is a symbol of extremism. I mean, I only use this to pray with oftentimes while taking a peaceful walk. But to society, this is a symbol of pure anarchy. When people ask me as a Catholic, what do I believe? What do I stand for? To me, it's quite simple. I just look them right in the eye and I say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. It's that simple. Because as a Catholic, this is what we all believe. And when you embrace that as the core of everything that you believe about faith, about the world, and what you understand, your life simply changes. The way you see the world changes. Today, I want to talk to you about how my life changed when I embraced our creed, when I embraced Christ in my life. I like to call devout faith taking the red pill of Christ. Because once you take that pill and you go down that road, you go down that rabbit hole, you can't go back to sleep. And I won't say that I haven't been tempted to ask questions whether God exists or if any of the stuff that we do believe, whether it's fruitful, whether we're doing all of this for nothing. I brought this question to my pastor and he said something very profound. He told me about Pascal's wager, which says that it's better to believe in God and to be wrong. And when you die, that at least you didn't lose anything. You lived a good life, you helped other people, you made an impact on the world. Then it is to have no belief and then when you die, to find out that you were wrong and that your soul is damned for life. And that kind of put it all into perspective for me because the world tells us how to be happy. The world tells us what success looks like. The world tells us what to strive for. And for so many of us, we have that success. We achieve those things, but we're still unhappy and feeling unfulfilled. Now, this is not a conversation for those of you who have no faith, you have no belief in God, you believe in nothing. You can stay. And I hope that what I have to say does change you in some way or impact you to go deeper and think bigger. But this conversation is definitely for those of us who are on that path and understand how hard that road is. Because every day, each one of us has to fight vices, fight demons of the world, if you will, demons of our past selves, the taunts of other people, whether they are Christians or not. And we have to make the choice every single day to stand by what we believe. And interestingly for me, my faith made me challenge the way that I see the world. All of my life, if you ask me before, I've always been right of center. So I had very conservative values but one of the things for me was that I believed in what I believed, but I didn't think that what I believed should impact the whole world. Hot button topics like abortion, marriage and divorce, intimacy and sex, gender identity, and other things that are really important now in the social sphere, I kind of shied away from having conversations about that. But since coming into the fullness of my faith, 
And oddly enough, because of the shifts in society, it seems like I never really moved on what I believe, but more and more society has pushed me over to the right. I really do feel that I have a more conservative lens when you look at life. And that's what I think society sees in me. And I kind of had to learn how to embrace that. And it makes me question, and I know some of you have that question as well. And this is what I want to discuss in the comments today. Is it possible for you to be truly Catholic and to be truly believing, yet have a more liberal or progressive view about life. What I started to find is that the more I became devout in my faith, the less I could say yes to that. What do I mean? For instance, one of the hot topics of the church right now is the position of women in faith. And I firmly do believe that women have a position in the church, but it's not as a priest, it's not in the priesthood that is specifically for men. And I think that it's important for us as women to go deeper into how we can lend ourselves into the fullness of our faith, but understand that there are levels to this and that yes, gender does play a role in that because gender plays a role within salvation and within what we believe as Christians. I think a lot of people confuse submission to inferiority, but that's never been the case in the actual Bible. You look at women like Ruth, you look at women like the Proverbs 31 woman, you look at women like Judith, you look at women like Esther, Sarah, our Blessed Virgin Mary, and you tell me that those are not strong women. You look me in the eyes and tell me that those are women who aren't important, who play no role in salvation. Beyond just our Blessed Mother, Ruth is the lineage from which Christ came. Ruth is the mother of Obed, the grandmother of Jesse, and the great-grandmother of David, as in King David, the house from which Jesus came. It was no mistake in sharing their stories in the Bible. And I believe that we as women can take from their examples to know exactly what our places should and can be within this beautiful faith. And to be honest, with the new trend that's happening with altar girls and stuff like that, I'm not even down for that because I think that the altar server position is a great place for young men to discern whether they have the leadership skills to become priests later on down the line. And that there should be other pathways for our young women to discern religious orders within the sisters. Now that's very controversial in today's time. When people ask me if I am a traditionalist or a modernist in the church, I'm very much a traditionalist. Don't be fooled by appearances. Given a preference, I prefer the traditional Latin mass, but I don't have such a bias about me that I don't think that the Novus Ordo provides a beautiful way for faithful Catholics to celebrate in the Holy Eucharist. My thing is this, if we can get down to the fact that we believe that both forms of the mass are valid, then we understand that Jesus is present. And the way that I see it, if Jesus is here, then Roxy is there. So I can be at either, and I will explain to you in another video exactly how I do that. On things that matter to us like abortion, I am 100% pro-life. I believe that life is precious and deserves to be lived from conception to natural death. And that's a hard thing to say in today's world, especially for someone like myself, who is a black woman that lives in America and I'm expected to have a completely different point of view about life. People expect me to have a very liberal view, a very progressive view based off of statistics. I guess you can say I'm actually the left's worst nightmare in that way. But this is the stance of the church and this is the stance of what I believe as a Catholic. Several times in my comments I have gotten the question of how do you live your life in faith in many of our major cities where what we believe as Catholics goes against the way that people live or express themselves. And when people find out that you're Catholic, they often don't want to associate with you. I'm very blessed to say that I've had many experiences in my life. My life has brought me to the top of the bodybuilding world. My life has had me rubbing elbows with some of your biggest name celebrities, just as someone who was pursuing a career in the performing arts. So I have friends and people who are very close to me who are homosexual. And the Catholic Catholic in me allows me to look at those people for their humanity. If what God is, is everything that is true, beautiful, and good, and we are made in His image, I try to see that in all of the people around me. So to answer that question, 
You know, I live in Los Angeles, I'm from New York City. And no matter where you go in this world, you cannot escape what society is becoming and what it has become. But it's up to you to live on the righteous path. It's up to you to make decisions about your life. It's up to you to extend grace, charity, and goodness to other people. It's up to you to stand up where you can about what you believe and know that, listen, in talking about these things and sharing these things, you might be shunned. But to come at people with respect at the end of the day, to me, is the most important thing. I think that times are simply different. And I look around and the hardest thing that I've had to do so far in my life is admit that I am devout in my faith. This is something about me that I've hidden for many years. Even as I went on and struggled with my beliefs, as I was trying to find something better than Catholicism, not because I lost belief, but because the world told me that I should be looking for something different, that I should be looking for something better, that this is not what you should be doing, that the Catholic Church is evil, and you're stupid for following along. And when you're hearing this constantly, this constant narrative from society and everyone around you, you start to believe it. As I told you, I went on the quest to find what was better and it led me right back to where I started. But this time coming back even more devout than before. I'm a woman who understands what it is to be protected in the armor of God. I'm a woman who understands what full submission means in life, in faith, and more. I'm a woman who leads her entire life by way of her faith and what she believes, even down to the way that I run my business with integrity, with care, with compassion, with charity, because I know that my greater task here is to inspire others to greatness, however way that means. Luke chapter 12 teaches us, too much is given, much will be required. And I really feel the weight of that finally in my life. I've always felt challenged in everything that I do and everything that I take on, but nothing feels more challenging and more vulnerable and more open and more at stake for me than revealing myself and what I believe and my faith and sharing that with the world. Because there's so much responsibility in this. There's so much responsibility to make sure that I'm delivering the right words, that I'm speaking truly what's on my heart, and that I'm doing everything that is inspired by God. And not only that, but getting it right by way of theology, by way of history, and to take it even further, to make sure that I am 100% living exactly as I am saying. And it's made me go even deeper. A lot of our critics will say that Christianity is dying, Catholicism is dying, and they may well be right in some respects, that our numbers are dwindling year after year with the amount of people that join the faith that you have a lot of Catholics who leave and become Protestants or Orthodox. Some may become Muslim or Jewish. Some may leave faith altogether and become spiritual or atheists. But the one thing that I think I notice is that even though we may be getting smaller in number, that we are growing more and more faithful. That yes, be the numbers small, but be those numbers strong. And I do see more and more people who have turned away from the faith actually come back as reverts, such as myself. How can I go back to accepting a world that tells me that I, as a woman, my entire worth is based off of my looks, off of my body, off of sex, and everything rooted in lust? It's completely debasing and objectifying at the end. Because with all of this talk of freedom and the ability to choose what you want to do, we're seeing more and more women fall into depression, anxiety, and more. How is that freeing? I want to conclude this by saying that whatever doubts you have in your head about faith, it's okay to have them. There are many examples of people in the Bible who doubted God or doubted his will for their lives. It's not the doubt that's the bad thing. In fact, I remember seeing an interview and a statement was said that made me really think that you have to be willing to lose your faith and find the truth and wherever that leads you, you have to be willing to go there without fear. And I think that's such a profound statement that you have to be willing to know that the end result could be you losing your faith or that you become even more fortified in your faith. And that's exactly what happened to me. I asked the questions. I went out, I looked, I searched, I read, and it led me back to the truth. It led me back to my faith as a Catholic. And so, that is why I am so passionate about telling you that that's what you need to do too. That you need to question everything and read and really study scripture. 
to read your Bible, to be fully present in Mass, whether you're at a Latin Mass or Novus Ordo, to ask questions and to get answers, to pray your rosary, to commit to the Liturgy of the Hours. There's so much out there to help you to go deeper. And that's what I challenge you with because that's what I do. I really hope that this conversation just let you see a little bit more into my mind, my heart, and I look forward to continuing to connect with you all and to just grow together in this wonderful journey of faith. And while you're at it, go ahead and watch this next video.